The question is that the proposed expenditure be agreed to, and I call the member for Moncrief. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I rise to speak on mental health in Australia uh, following the government's recent budget. And mental health uh, and suicide prevention, of course, is a key focus uh, of the opposition, as it is for me as Shadow Minister for Youth. I understand the enormity of that challenge. Uh, the opposition has a strong track record of investing in and prioritising uh, mental health support, uh, whether that be at a youth level or through our expansion of the Headspace network, uh, which provides critical mental health and wellbeing support to young people across Australia, including my electorate in Southport, uh, or through our long-standing investments in men's sheds, which connect men in our community and are a powerful tool in addressing their mental health and wellbeing. Again, I've got three of those in my electorate at Miami, Ashmore and, and Narang. Um, the Coalition has a strong record of investing in supports and research for eating disorders so we can better understand uh, the diseases, um, enable earlier intervention and encourage more people to seek help so they have the best a chance of recovering. And, and I commend all healthcare professionals who work to provide that link between mental health services and schools to facilitate that early recognition and intervention of depression and related disorders uh, amongst uh, our young people. But we must acknowledge the struggles Australian youth face and that is why this new government must continue our legacy of prioritising investment uh, in mental health. Uh, Minister. The National Study of Mental Health discovered almost two in five Australians aged 16 to 24 years of age had been dealing with a mental illness for more than 12 months. Uh, to help address these issues, the Coalition provided funding to further invest in and expand the role of organisations such as Head to Health and, as I mentioned, Headspace, to increase accessibility and availability of support for uh, young people in those communities. Um, the government must outline what their plan uh, is to ensure that these communities are able to access the supports that they so desperately need. And we are, on this side understand that the risk of suicide rates are often highest two to three years after a crisis, uh, a pandemic or a natural disaster, a flood. Um, and many communities across Australia are now coming to terms with those challenges um, and um, many of them, many, many challenges that they've encountered our communities across Australia, one after the other it seems. So I asked the Minister, um, are you considering further investment in mental health programs, uh, noting the devastating floods that I mentioned that are currently affecting so many in New South Wales uh, and in Victoria? Um, where in your budget um, is, is there additional new support for these people to turn to? It's also critical uh, that, that young people are at the forefront of these discussions, especially in advising uh, governments of where the investment in mental health supports are best placed to achieve uh, real outcomes. And that is why I held a, a local Moncrief Youth Roundtable in my office to discuss issues that matter most to, to young people in my community and, of course, mental health uh, was clearly the biggest issue uh, that they were facing and I he heard some very poignant stories from some beautiful young people um, that came to my office to talk about uh, the top five issues concerning them. Uh, mental health and wellbeing really was uh, something that we spent a lot of time talking about of great concern to young people uh, on the Gold Coast. Um, the Albanese government must prioritise mental health and give certainty to the millions of Australians each year who rely on the 20 Medicare subsidised psychology sessions introduced, uh, of course, by the coalition government uh, during the pandemic. And Australians have been through multiple disasters uh, and a pandemic, and now there is the compounding impact of the cost of living crisis on top of that, placing additional stress and pressure on mums and dads and families around the country at a time when Australians need the support uh, the most. Uh, this government has not provided any certainty in the budget that they'll continue uh, the Medicare subsidised psychology sessions um, in 2020 that the coalition doubled from 10 sessions to 20 sessions. Uh, this measure will return back to 10 sessions in December unless the government chooses to continue the additional support provided by the coalition, which has been relied on by so many Australians as they seek support uh, when they're facing these difficult times. Uh, so, Minister, um, I'd like to ask you if the Albanese government will provide certainty to Australians now uh, and commit to continuing the 20 subsidised sessions uh, that the coalition introduced. It's a very important measure uh, that so many Australians are relying on across the country, families who are facing challenges and mental health difficulties, uh, or will you be ripping out this additional support away from Australians at a time when, of course, our communities, particularly those in New South Wales and Victoria that are 
currently underwater, uh, inland flooding in regional remote Australia as well. Uh, will you be ripping out that support or will you be continuing 20 psychological, psychological sessions? <laughs>